This week's parsha it tells us an incident that occurred with Dina, Yaakov's daughter. That she was uh, abducted and uh, assaulted by uh, Shem, and uh, as a result, uh, the brothers Shimon and Levi. Uh, took it upon themselves firstly to free her and secondly to punish the perpetrators and since uh, the entire community Shem did not see anything wrong in his action they didn't take any uh, steps to uh, correct what had happened. So therefore they made war on the entire community and uh, sacked the uh, town and took booty and they took Dino with them. That's the story the Torah tells. Uh, The Torah also mentions that Yaakov Avinu apparently disapproved of their behavior. We'll see later he disapproves strongly in uh, Parshas Vaychi, where uh, he uh, chastises them, Klei Chomas Mechir But here, Yaakov said a practical thing, Loma Ivashti Mesruchi, you have destroyed my reputation here amongst the uh, local and the indigenous population here, and they will unite and they'll make war upon us because they won't let something like this pass, that uh, strangers in the land, small group of people should come and do such a thing and destroy the city of Shrem. And that's where the Torah leaves it. The Torah doesn't say anything more about the story. So the Meforshim and the Medrash and everyone searches what did happen. Were there any consequences as to uh, the behavior of Shimon and Levi regarding the reaction of the rest of the people in the Canaan? So the Ramban discusses it. The Ramban says an interesting phrase there, Imnam in le Sefer Ayoshur. There's a book that was called Sefer Ayoshur. Now there are many, many, at least four or five books in Jewish tradition that are called Sefer Ayoshur. First of all, the Sefer, the Torah itself is called Sefer Ayoshur. And the Nitziv says that uh, Chumash Breshis is called Sefer Ayosher because the Ovos were Yeshurim. They were straight people. So this is a book about straight people. That's why it's called Sefer Ayosher. But there was a book of legends that was uh, passed down through the ages, also called the Sefer Ayosher. There's a book, Sefer Yoshor that's attributed to Rabbeinu Tam, to Rashi's grandson. So there are many uh, uh, possibilities as to what this Sefer Yoshor is that the Ramban refers to. And he says there, Imnamin, if we believe, he doesn't say it for a certainty, because uh, Sefer Yoshur is, uh, so to speak, clouded as to uh, who wrote it and as to its accuracy. But he says, if we believe it, the Sefer Yoshur says that what Yaakov Avinu said became prophecy. That exactly what he said happened later that the other towns and tribes in Canaan 
united and made war against the family of Yaakov, and that they successfully defended themselves. But you have a period of time of uh, great danger and violence. And that was uh, the motivating factor, the Sefer Yosha says, why Yaakov dealt with Shimon and Levi so harshly. Because they said here a very uh, logical thing. Achizona yaases achoseinu. What, are we going to let this pass? Are we going to let them treat our sister as though she is, uh, you can do whatever you want with her? And the Torah does not record an answer to them. But the answer to them, the Sefer Yosha, so to speak, provides, you're right. But look at the consequences. Look what happened afterwards. Look what you brought upon us. And uh, sometimes, if not uh, most of the time in life, actions that people take, which appear to be justified, create consequences which are almost disastrous, which cause great problems. And therefore, that was the criticism that Yaakov had. He did not agree, he did not disagree with their anger or with their emotion or with even the statement, Achazone Yases Achazene. Yaakov said, You're right in all of this. But uh, we are Maseimot. We have to look at the situation the way it is. And uh, heroic uh, behavior that is counterproductive and only brings upon us greater problems. So sometimes uh, you have to swallow what happens and move on because of the later consequences. And the, uh, the Ramban says that therefore that's why the Torah quotes for us his statement, because he, uh, so to speak, prophesied. He, uh, he knew what was going to happen. How did he know what was going to happen? So that goes to the beginning of the Parsha. When he says, Him Lovan Garthi, I lived with Lovan. 20 years with Lovan. 20 years with Lovan is an education. I know how they think. I know how they behave. I know what their reaction will be. And you think, therefore, by rising up now and taking revenge, that that will be the end of the story. You know, it'll all come out good. Uh, right will triumph. He says, but I know love them. Never is the end with Lovan. There never is a final thing. And that's his opinion with Esau also. Make peace with Esau now, but that doesn't mean anything, because I know Esau. When will be the end with Esau? Olam Mushim, Artsion, Lishvotas, Ar Esau, Voice of Hashem, Amlucha, that will all happen. That's the Achris Ayomim. But right now, uh, right now, uh, he appeases Esau. And tomorrow, Shir, in the morning, I'm going to uh, one of the points that will, will be discussed is this attitude towards Esau. Because we'll see that there are different uh, assessments as to the correctness of the behavior of Yaakov. But in any event here, so he knows what's going to happen. And he tells them in advance, this is, what, this is what's going to happen now. These are the consequences of your behavior. <clears throat> and therefore the Ramban says, we have to look and see what happened. And Imnamin Lusefer Ayosha, 
if we will believe the incidents that are recorded in the Sefer Yosha, so then they were in for a period of years of war, which the Chumash does not discuss at all. Uh, Chumash leaves it as an open book for us. But that the Jewish tradition said that uh, this was a, a two-edged sword. It also, Yaakov, in, in effect, is saying there are wars that never end. You can win a hundred battles, but the war is not over. We see that uh, I saw there was a poll taken today amongst the Palestinian Arabs. I know I heard uh, on the radio uh, somebody uh, who's an expert. So he says, you know, that uh, they, by them, they want the Medina from the the Jordan to the sea, and no Jews, and yeah. So that's after. Uh, after a hundred years, right? And that's after uh, they, they lost so many times. doesn't make a difference. It's, uh, it's never-ending. The struggles are never-ending. Now, we don't like that because we would like the struggle to end. And we think on the basis of rational thinking that somehow we can come, we can settle, settle it. But if the end is that, so to speak, uh, loving is loving to the end, Esau is Esau to the end, Yishmoel is Yishmoel to the end, it never ends, so then all of this, so to speak, becomes useless. So that was another point that Yaakov made with Shimon and Levi. You won the battle, but you didn't win the war. took care of Shem. Now what about the rest of them? And you can't go on and destroy the entire world. So there has to be a different way to accommodate ourselves to these problems. And throughout the long exile of the Jewish people, this has always been the question. How to accommodate ourselves to the realities so most of the time, we never had choices, never had real options as to what to do. So in our time, uh, we at least feel that we have options. Whether we really do, it's also questionable, but we, we think we do. So the question is, which option is the best option? What will be the consequences of doing this, right? Uh, what were the uh, consequences of the first Lebanese war? What were the consequences of uh, withdrawing from Gush Katif? So you don't know that till 20, 30 years later. If then. So uh, that, that is part of the idea that the Torah raises for us. These are you know, existential questions. And therefore, the Torah does not tell us the end of the story. Because it could be that there never is an end to the story. And leaves it uh, the, both sides, Shimon and Levi, and Yaakov on the other side. The Torah, and the, the Torah doesn't even tell us what happened afterwards. But uh, it's very interesting that uh, the Ramban should quote the Sefer Ayosha because he, he really means to tell us more than just this story, but uh, other stories, especially in his time in the exile when the Jewish situation in Spain was deteriorating uh, only 150 years before uh, the expulsion. So all of that plays into uh, his viewpoint on the matter and his quotation from the Sefer Ayosha. Rabbi Hanania ben Akashi, Omer Otsva, Kodesh Borchul, Lezakos, Yis Yisrael, Ufich Achir Bolahem Toro, Mitzvot, Shenemar, Aranoi Chavheit, Zaman, Sitko, Yagdil, Toro, Yadir. Mm-hmm.